Breaking tonight, a new twist in the scandal over White House security. The House Oversight Committee today held a hearing into the recent breach involving a man with a knife who managed to jump the White House fence and made it all the way into the White House into the East Room. Turns out the Secret Service downplayed that event and may have even misrepresented how bad it was. Then late today, we learned that separately, a convict with a gun on him was able to get into an elevator with President Obama during his visit to the CDC in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. Congressman Jason Chaffetz questioned the head of the Secret Service today about whether she briefed the president on one or more of these incidents. What percentage of the time do you inform the president if his personal security has been breached? I would say in proximity to the incident. Now I ask you what percentage of the time do you inform the president if his personal security has in any way, shape, or form been breached? Percent of the time, 100 percent of the time, we would advise the president. You would advise the president? Yes. In calendar year 2014, how many times has that happened? I have not briefed him with the exception of one occasion for the 9th, September 19th incident. So the only time you, you've briefed the president on perimeter security, the president's personal security, uh, first family security has been one time in, in 2014. That's correct. Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz is with me now. Congressman, and so I, I assume you were trying to establish that she neglected to inform him he was in a locked box with a man who's a convicted felon holding a gun on him. I knew about that incident, but it wasn't yet out in the public. I wanted to see if she was going to be open, candid, and, and honest, and, she, and I don't think she was. And, and I think it's time that she uh, be fired by the President of the United States or that she resign. She really? either did not tell, she did not either, she did not tell the President of the United States that a three-time convict with a gun was on, was in an elevator with the President's Secret Service, did not know that he had a gun, only found out after the fact. And that since that incident happened literally two weeks ago today, she either did not tell the president, which she should have done, or she did tell the president and lied to Congress. It, you can't have it both ways. The White House advance team's got some responsibility for that uh, as well, I assume. Uh, does it, has she represented, has she, has she demonstrated an incompetence? Can we fairly lay it all on this woman? Look, she was uh, hired originally as the chief of staff and then promoted to become the director more than a year ago because there's a severe morale problem here that has not been turned around. The protocol is lacking, the, the training is just not happening, and leadership is really questionable. She, she has not turned this agency around, and this is an agency that can never, ever, ever make a mistake, and yet they're happening faster than we can even name them. Right. That's exactly right, Congressman. Thank you. Joining Thanks, me now sir. as well, Dan Bongino, who's a former Secret Service agent who served in the George W. Bush administration and the Obama administration. Good to see you again, sir. And so your thoughts on his comment about, first, whether Ms. Pearson needs to go. Yeah, unfortunately, Megan, I, I, I think she does. And it's not just her. There is a small group, uh, cabal, in Secret Service headquarters of managers, upper-level managers that have been there for a long time that, frankly, and I'm sorry to say this, have, have decimated the agency. Morale is terrible. Uh, I don't know if they're preparing for their second careers, trying to butter up to the White House staff. But they have destroyed morale of the men and women of the Secret Service that call me and speak to me, Megan, are just infuriated and enraged at the lack of leadership, the lack of ability to stand up to the White House staff and take this agency to a better tomorrow. They, what, they need to fix this. What specifically have they done? Why is morale so low? Well, morale's low for a number of reasons. They don't feel like the people in these upper-level management positions are qualified to be there, are making the proper decisions, uh, and importantly, are defending them when it comes to these very important, Megan, these friction battles that happen constantly. Books have been written about it uh, with the Secret Service agents on the ground, the rank-and-file men and women, and the staff. It seems like the how White House staff... How do Dan? I mean, in a case like this, like these two cases we're talking about, how do you blame that on bureaucracy? Well, I'll give you an example. We had the incident in South Africa for the Mandela uh, funeral. Uh, the Mandela funeral, should, the president should have never gone to that event, Megan. The Secret Service agents that actually do the work, I've done four, uh, three foreign advances, excuse me, where I was the lead advance, that was impossible to secure. Those agents knew it. The staff pushed for that event, and we didn't have people in management willing to fight the fight. 
Megan, no rank and file agent's going to walk into the Oval Office and tell the president, you're not going to the Mandela funeral. Uh, but it I takes got... people with D.C. gravitas But somebody who breached that. that number of, of, you know, perimeter security measures, who jumped over the fence, you know, the other day, how do you blame that on anybody other than the Secret Service, with all due respect to those guys and women who do a lot to protect this president and the country? Sure. No question there were personal failures. I'm not absolving or apologizing for them. I'm not paid to do that. I don't work there anymore. But there are a number of systemic problems that could have led to this, Megan. We had people on those posts who were, were right out of the academy, watching the front door of the White House. You had a United Nations General Assembly preparation session going on up in New York. You had tons of uniform division officers up there. Yeah. The morale in the uniform division, which is separate from the agent side, is even worse than on the agent side. The attrition rate is terrible. You can't thing, keep senior people there. The one thing we have going for us is that he wasn't hurt, the family wasn't hurt, and now it's an opportunity to learn. Dan, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Megan.